Welcome back guys, thank you very much for joining me. Today we're going to talk about the Aladdin Easy Fit Isolator and why I think every plumber, handyman or maintenance person should keep one of these on their vans. This is probably the second one of these I've installed. It makes the job so much easier, nothing to worry about. You can do it live, anybody can do it with any mechanical experience. I've just had to do one on a stop tap that was on the outside of a building and the coal mains was, I couldn't isolate it, it's that simple. And so I had to do it live basically. And this made the job so much easier. So as always guys, no messing around, straight on with the video and let me show you how good this thing really is. So what do you actually get in the kit itself? This is my spare kit out of my van and as you can see from the box you can install on live pressurised hot or cold pipes. You're obviously going to need a drill, you simply clamp, cut and isolate the pipes live. It works on multiple materials of pipe and of course it is WRAS approved product. Now let's go ahead and take a look inside the box. First things first, you've got your instructions on how to install it. If you need that sort of thing, that's perfectly fine, but we'll just get rid of those. And then we've got the white cap that we'll need to install after we've installed the Aladdin isolator itself. Nice little piece of kit, beautifully made, very well crafted. You have your blue and red isolators to obviously tell you which part you have installed it on. And then if you are buying the first kit, it will come with the uh, isolator tool kit. Now basically this kit most people will have. Okay, so inside you're paying a little bit more money for the Allen key bit itself, which just fits on the lug nuts. You're then gonna have your 40 mil bit, which I do recommend getting the first kit because it's got a good guide and you will need these guides later on when installing the valve itself. And you also have a crosshead bit, which again, most people will have. Right, let's get on with installing it. So before we go ahead and fit our isolator to the pipe work, we need to go and make sure that the pipe work is suitable, which this is. We need to establish where it's going, that the pipe itself is free of burrs, any paint, any kinks or anything that will impede the seal on the isolator. So once happy, which is going there, we're going to go ahead and get our isolator and unscrew the four pan head screws holding the unit together. Once we've done that, we're going to take the unit apart and inspect the seals to make sure that they're suitable. They're not damaged or harmed in any sort of way that may compromise the seal on the pipe, which this looks okay. So we're going to go ahead and fit the back unit. We're going to take it to the back of the pipe, slightly move the pipe work off without damaging it. Once happy, we can pop the top unit over the top and install the screws in a diagonal fashion, assuming that it goes one, two, three, and four. We're gonna install the second and third holding pan head screw. You're going to set your drill to about halfway on the torque setting. Mine is just over five, and of course, on a low gear. At this point, we're not gonna tighten these up fully just so it takes the nib of the isolator holding it in place and we're going to go to one and then of course four now you can go across diagonally tightening them up taking care not to go too much once we're happy and we've got it where we need it we can go ahead and add on our 14 mil deep socket now we're going to obviously use this to drive in our cutter plug. I must note that we have to leave on a poly tube, which is just here, on there, and we crack that off later. Keep that on so we don't depress the spindle when installing with the socket. So now before we pop the socket in, we're going to make sure that we're in low gear and we're going to engage the clutch to the drill setting. So it's at its maximum. Now the aim of this is to drive this brass fitting all the way up to this red line here. That's when we know it's been depressed properly. If you're using this on plastic pipe, I recommend you use a wrench, just so you don't dislodge the plastic when doing this. We're gonna go ahead and pop the drill on, making sure that it's going to rotate in a clockwise fashion. So normal drill mode, clockwise fashion. Pop it onto the spindle and we're going to drive it in slowly, you will feel it bite. Now 
Now we're going to go ahead and manually remove this collar. You unscrew this by hand in a counterclockwise rotation. So obviously lefty loosey, righty tighty. So we're going left. If the collar will not unscrew, the plug is probably not in all the way. So you might have to go back and recheck your red line to make sure it's in at its maximum depth. Perfect. Now, as you can see, we have to make sure that these two red points line up. So you're going to take an adjustable wrench, spanner, and you're going to turn them in a clockwise direction, but if not, you can back it off slightly to line them up. Perfect, just like that. However, if you are backing it off slightly, make sure you do not back it off more than half a turn because you may compromise the seal inside. At this stage, we can go ahead and remove this poly tube. Do not remove this collar here. That will stay on. It's very uh, temperamental, so try and not knock it off. Just like that. Go ahead and remove the half nut. Then you simply push the collar the white clip back in place. Now at this stage, I use a screwdriver because these are very small screws and I do not wish to damage them with the drill in any manner. Once we've done that, we go ahead and add on the handle so it can isolate. Perfect. And then, of course, follow up with a back nut and tighten with the adjustable wrench. You don't need to go crazy with this, just nip it up. And that's it. Perfect, off goes the supply. We can crack on with the job that we was meant to be doing. So realistically, you've just seen me do that in minutes. I do think Aladdin's onto something here. It does save a lot of time. It's slightly expensive, but certainly worth keeping one on the van. Even if you don't come to use it for some time. At the end of the day, how many jobs do you go to or how many times do you come across a stop tap where there's no means of isolation or unable to isolate the supply for whatever reason? If you've already got one of these on the van, you're sorted. So after all that, they are a little bit expensive, yes, at $44.99, of course they're going to be, but the refill packs are a lot cheaper. Now most people, most engineers, most plumbers will be able to just get the refill pack. You won't, you won't need to buy the full kit because all you're going to get that's different is the 14mm deep socket, the Allen key bit for the little bolts and the crosshead screwdriver bit. Most people will have that anyway. Do I think it's worth keeping on the van? Yes I do. I mean, if you, most jobs, most plumbers know that when they go through the job, you guarantee some difficulty. And how many stop taps do you come across that you can't actually service, you can't turn off? They're all stiff. Yeah, you could swap them and all that aggro, but it's just a lot easier, especially if you're doing a quick job, to slam one of these bad boys on. Now, you could argue with the fact that the customer won't pay that, I agree, but that's a hurdle you're going to have to contend with when you come across it, really. It saved me a bunch of times, and I'm, I'm happy to recommend them. So I hope this video has helped you guys. Make sure you give me a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, because it does help me out, and I'll see you on the next video.